Welcome everyone to Fantasy Foresight, the podcast. We're your hosts and co-founders of FantasyForesight.com, coming to you from the Rambo Fixture Company Studios. I'm Ben. And I'm Jay. You ready to get rolling, Jay? You know it. Let's do this. All right, let's go. Welcome in, everyone. It is Thursday, May 14th, and we've got another great ADP study episode for you with our guy, the Foresight Encyclopedia. And tonight, we've got the exciting wide receivers to dive into. And once again, Fantasy Foresight, the podcast is live. How you doing tonight, Jay? Ben, I'm doing great. Can't wait to dive into the wide receivers. We've covered quarterbacks. We've covered the all-important running backs. But now we get into the large and wide variety group of the wide receivers. Steve, how are you doing tonight, my friend? Hey, fellas. I am doing phenomenal. Thank you for asking, Jay. And, uh, yeah, you put it best. When it comes to the wide receivers, there is quite an array of wide receivers to talk about. And, um, yeah, like I tell you guys each week, love being on the show. It's definitely a nice escape from reality talking some fantasy football with you guys. Hey, fourth live show, first one without any bugs tonight, fellas. Let's go. Way to Jacobs. Thanks, Jay. All right. So just like the last two episodes of this series, here's how tonight's episode is going to work. This podcast series is all based on Steve's blog study examining the six-year history of wide receivers comparing ADP ranks to their actual fantasy finishes. You can find all Steve's great work under the Foresight Encyclopedia tab at FantasyForesight.com and follow him on Twitter at FF underscore Encyclopedia. We're going to be looking at three key pieces of information tonight for each of the 12 highest drafted wide receivers over the last six seasons. First, we're going to check and see if they lived up to or hopefully exceeded their ADP price tag. Second, we'll take a look at their relative usability percentages to see how often they finished as a top six wide receiver, that elite level, a top 12 wide receiver, that wide receiver one level, or a top 24 wide receiver, that wide receiver two level. And then just for fun, we'll check out the way too early ADPs at fantasyfootballcalculator.com to get current examples of actual wide receivers these concepts apply to. Third, we'll look at it from the opposite perspective and examine where the actual top 12 wide receiver performers were drafted over the last six years. After analyzing all that data together, we'll identify the points in the draft with the highest wide receiver upside, the safest floor, and the best draft points to target wide receiver one production in your upcoming drafts this season. Love it. As a reminder, as a reminder, real quick, more housekeeping before we get started. <laughs> Our research perspective is most applicable to 12 to 15 team single QB PPR redraft format formats. However, many of these concepts can be helpful to dynasty players too. And all of our fantasy finishes data comes from fantasypros.com in full PPR mode from weeks one through 16 specifically, which is because the most championship games are played in week 16. And all of our ADP data always comes from fantasyfootballcalculator.com. All right, guys, you ready? First up, let's go. The highest drafted wide receiver over the past six seasons. Steve, take it away. And speaking of housekeeping, before I do jump into that, just want to let our listeners know really quick, um, when it came to the parameters I put together for this particular study, what constitutes being considered a um, wide receiver that gives you a proper return on investment versus somebody who you know isn't giving you the return on investment but also isn't a bust, what I like kind of call in between, and then what constitutes being considered a bust. So I considered it being a wide receiver providing you a good return on your investment if where you drafted them, they finished within five spots or better okay. of that draft position. Um, the in-between, is I said I like to call it, when you finish between six and 11 spots of where you were drafted, and then I considered you an outright bust when you finished 12 spots or further out of where you were drafted. So Basically a full that, round or a full tier behind where you were drafted. Makes perfect sense to me. Precisely. So now that we have that out of the way, we'll go ahead and jump right into the ADP wide receiver one uh, from 2019. And that's none other than Devontae Adams. Uh, He was going last year at the 106 coming off, you know, a a tremendous 2018 season where he finished as the top wide receiver, was 
uber consistent. And that had fantasy owners, you know, reaching up to grab him mm-hmm. in the middle of the first. Unfortunately, um, Adams got bit with the injury bug. And that is ultimately what led to him busting with a WR26 finish last season. Um, you know, if you guys recall, I think, hey, Jay, wasn't it against your Eagles on a Thursday night game? I think he had like 10 grabs for like a buck 80 in the first half. I do not recall. <laughs> and um, he didn't play then for four and a half weeks after that. So. <laughs> he got it all out of the way. He got it all out of his system. He didn't need to play. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? So uh, here's what's interesting. I'm drinking now. Thanks. Yeah, uh, the Eagles and Browns, they'll, they'll do that to their fan base. Yep. So, interestingly enough, from 2018 in this study, going back to 2015, there's one guy and one guy only <laughs> who's been drafted as the top wide receiver, and that is Mr. Antonio Brown. And wouldn't you know that Antonio Brown, at that ADP wide receiver one spot, returned at least a wide receiver to finish in all four of those seasons crazy Um, i know and it makes his absolute disappearance from football and fantasy football that much more of a tragedy um you you pretty much for four years there you take him as a top wide receiver and you are locked and loaded with elite production a guy that's going to help carry you to the fantasy playoffs give you a shot at the championship um but yeah, what can I say? A two WR one finishes, two WR two finishes, and then uh, this is going to be a little blast from the past. In 2014, Calvin Megatron Johnson uh, was going at the 104 high end first round pick as the first receiver off the board and finished as a bust at WR 17. And the common theme between the two wide receivers that didn't provide a proper return on investment out of this draft position is, you know, they got bit with the injury bug, both Calvin um, and Devontae Adams. So overall, though, when you look at the position, um, two-thirds of the time you got elite production, or we just call it Antonio Brown at the time, you got elite production. And otherwise, I think that if Johnson and Adams had both been healthy in those seasons, I'm sure they probably would have returned elite production as well. Big if, you know, you look at the at the return as two-thirds of the time you're getting a return on your investment at the WR1 overall, overall spot, and that's great, but yes, yeah, Steve, you look at the fact that all of the positive returns were one guy, so I don't know if that's good or if I should be cautious now because the only two other guys taken at the 101 spot in drafts ended up busting for you, so it, it's a little bit of a concern, although the name I'm seeing off the side of my screen as to who's going there now gives me a little bit more of a warm feeling, much more of a warmer feeling than Calvin Johnson gives me. He's like an ex-girlfriend. I love him to death, but he just broke my heart too many times. It's a very tumultuous relationship we have, Calvin and I. But yeah, so right now, going with the first, going as the first wide receiver in drafts at the 107 mark, actually the furthest back the first wide receiver has gone in the last six years, seven years really, is none other than Michael Thomas. Again, makes me feel warm and fuzzy knowing it's, a, it's at least Michael Thomas. I feel better about that, although I would have felt good about Devontae Adams and Calvin Johnson, too, so I don't know. Absolutely. So far, Michael Thomas has been exceptionally durable throughout his short career, and uh, we have no reason to expect anything right. different heading yep. into this season for him. When you take a look at where the actual wide receiver ones have been drafted on average over the last six years, it's been as the ADP wide receiver four. That price point on average is the 110 spot, and over the past six years, the most expensive that price point has been is the 101, and the cheapest it's been is the 206. So overall, when you look at all three key pieces of information, the proper ROI is there, the usability floor is there, the elite upside is really there, and so is the history of where the actual wide receiver one overall has been drafted since 2014. And when Steve went through those names, those guys line up with the same type of expectations that you would have out of a guy like Michael Thomas heading into the season. All right, next up we've got ADP wide receiver two. How are they looking, Steve? Uh, ADP wide receiver two is uh, 
when I when I went through the study, it, it definitely jumps out at you. Uh, it's a beautiful uh, position to draft a wide receiver. And I'll just go through these finishes, starting with uh, DeAndre Hopkins last season. Um, he was going at the 107 on average, finishes WR3. He, he did have a quite a, a lull for, I think, about a month or so, maybe five weeks last season, where he definitely let fancy owners down. But he picked it up, you know, heading into the – uh, second half of uh, last season, obviously well enough to finish as a WR three on on the year. Now, bef- season before that, DeAndre Hopkins once again finishes as WR four. Before that, Julio Jones finishing at WR seven. Julio again finishing as WR eight. This would be the only time in this six year span that somebody finished outside of five positions of where you drafted them, and it was six positions. So. Really close to being a clean sweep on getting a proper return on investment because the year prior to that, Julio finished as the top wide receiver. And I see, here's what I really love about doing these studies, just the football fan in me, is when you get back into like 2015, 14, and you see some of these names, like you said, Jay, they could give you – they could give you some bad feelings, but you can get some good feelings too. And I love seeing Demarius Thomas right there finishing as the wide receiver too, right where fantasy owners were drafting him back in 2014. So, I mean, guys, when you look at it, five out of six times you got, you know, an elite performance out of that ADP wide receiver too. Only one time was it, you know, what I consider an in-between finish, and it was as close to being a proper return on investment by my studies parameters as you could get. So, um, you know, f- phenomenal. And uh, yeah, this year average uh, WR4 finish, which is just incredible. Yeah, looking at these WR2 numbers, they're making me feel very warm and fuzzy inside. I'm seeing a variety of players go in that spot over the last six years, and I'm seeing the same consistent top 12 return regardless of who it is and more often than not they're going in the top six or they're finishing in the top six overall at the end of the season so i'm loving this value i'm loving this return at the wr2 spot currently that player in way too early drafts this season at going sec going as the second receiver with the seventh pick in the first round is Devonte adams very interesting very interesting indeed. And when you look at where the actual wide receiver twos over the last six years have been drafted, they're taken historically as the ADP wide receiver eight. On average, that price tag comes at the 205. The priciest that's been over the last six years is the 103. The cheapest that's been over the last six years is the 404. Wow. That is insane. Think about the fact that you were drafting the ADP wide receiver two in the fourth round. That's just nuts. Uh, So I do not know what happened that season, but that was just really weird. So, you know, when you look at all three key pieces of information, you're getting 100% ROI. You know, five out of six times, it's it's really good ROI. And like Steve said, the only one other example is the closest you can possibly get to being a great ROI. You know, Ben, hey, oh, sorry. Before we move on, I'm just, as you're reading these numbers to me, I'm comparing them to the positions we've already covered. I'm looking back at the running backs and quarterbacks, and the wide receivers, the average finish for these guys, they're going so much earlier in drafts, so it just seems like they're much more predictable and consistent, so you can hit on the right guys early in drafts and know you're getting that return, whereas running backs, those top 12 finishers, they came from all over the board at times due to injury or usage or whatever, so I- I'm loving this data so far and seeing who's going where and how consistent these top end guys can be. Yeah, not ready to move off this position yet because in the process of you getting that 100% ROI, two-thirds of that time is elite top six production. Yeah. The other third of that time, you're getting a top 12 wide receiver one floor. There is literally no risk over the last right. Two seasons. Right, And like you said, Devontae Adams makes absolutely perfect sense there because a Rodge is going to absolutely pepper this guy with 200 targets this season just to make a point. So next up, we've got ADP wide receiver three. What do they look like over the last six years, Steve? So, fellas, uh, a little more inconsistent now, um, hitting the ADP WR3 spot. And uh, we'll kick it off with Julio Jones last season. 
Uh, that's where he was going on average at the 110. And, you know, Julio did what Julio does. He just, you know, puts together elite fantasy seasons, finished as the WR4. And the, the one sad thing about his season last year is he missed one game and he missed his extending his record of five straight 1,400 yard seasons. He missed a sixth season by just three measly yards. Nah. I kind of wish he would have suited up that game and just, you know, they just threw him like a quick slant. <laughs> just something, that. yeah. Yeah, but uh, finishes his WR4, which is, you know, phenomenal. You're happy. Absolutely. He's a third wide receiver off the board. Uh, the prior season, Odell Beckham Jr., uh, he finishes as the wide receiver 14. You know, he missed, I think it was like three or four games down the stretch that season. So he, you know, finishes with a, you know, middling eh, sort of return on investment. Odell Beckham Jr., the year before that, however, finishes as wide receiver 80. Not missed, good. I think like 12 games. Yeah. And Odell Beckham Jr., who hey. continues to own the ADP. Double what do you know? Spot, he finishes right where you drafted him in 2016. And then Des Bryant in 2015 and 14 was the ADP wide receiver three, and he put together finishes of 77 and wide receiver four. So, you know, looking at it overall over, you know, from a six-year perspective, 50-50 on getting, you know, that great return on investment. And, you know, what, 33% of the time it's been, you know, bus city. You know, I like to see the guarantee on the box. I don't know what it is. It makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside. But that warm and fuzzy feeling is gone looking at these WR3 numbers. 50-50 on whether or not I'm either going to get a great return or completely bust, essentially. That's not so great. Now, I do like the fact that I'm seeing the same names for extended periods of time. I do like that. We just talked about how consistent these guys are and how great of a performer they can be. But the name of the game is making sure you pick the right guy at the right spot. So at the WR3, where it's a little bit more of a roller coaster this season, this one's going to be crazy interesting, guys. This season, that guy going once again at the 107 spot. We've got a cluster there in drafts where the receivers start to go. The guy going off third in the list is Tyreek Hill. Wow. Boomer bust. Yeah, exactly. I don't think any of us are surprised to see him there. That describes him fairly decently, and he's definitely got the chance at that elite top six upside. And when you look at where the actual wide receiver threes have been drafted over the last six seasons, on average, they're going as the ADP wide receiver seven. And I find that pretty funny because it, it just helps illustrate the extreme ups and downs over the last six seasons where, you know, in the good years, you're looking at wide receiver three or four. And on the bad years, you're looking as bad as wide receiver 77 or wide receiver 80. So it's pretty much 50, 50 elite or disastrous with a slight chance of mediocre. No, thanks. All right, Steve, does it get any better for ADP wide receiver four? Yeah, we're actually uh, continuing to trend the wrong way here. So ah. n now, not to this guy's um, credit, Michael Thomas last season was the wide receiver four um, as far as ADP is concerned, going at the 110 on average. And, you know, what, what can we say? I mean, Marvin Harrison's 143 receptions in a season record had stood till 2002. Even in today's pass-happy NFL, it seemed like that record might never get broken until Michael Thomas caught 149 balls last season. I mean, the PPR, <laughs> that's just stupid. <laughs> so, I mean, it's almost 10 grabs a game. It's like playing Madden. Or Unreal. But, Unreal. Um, so, you know, he, he finished by he finished WR1 by a landslide. Uh, the season before that, out of this ADP wide receiver four spot, we had a wide receiver seven finish. And then working 2017 – down to 2014. I'm just going to read these off. Wide Perfect. receiver 18, wide receiver 27, wide receiver 12. So uh, okay, and then wide receiver 23. So you know a, a cluster. Three out of four years we have bus. You know, just looking at it from a six-year perspective. You know, you're paying a on average a 110 for this spot, and you're only getting a proper return on investment a third of the time. So you know that that's definitely something to give some consideration to at the ADP. Uh, 
WR4 spot. Yeah, when you look at the historical return, there is a reason for some pause because you look overall the fact that you're only getting a top six return out of your fourth highest drafted wide receiver. 17% of the time. Half the time, you're getting a top 12 receiver come to the end of the season. So half the time, you're getting a WR2 or worse. So that is a little worrisome with the guy coming out of this spot. However, if you look at the trend, the last four years, the finishes have gotten better and better and better and better, ending with Michael Thomas's WR1 finish last season. So will this player continue that trend this season and continue to give a good return Turn on investment out of that four spot this season the guy going in that four spot with the ninth pick in the first round is julio jones yep we'll see if julio uh, stays in this spot as we move closer to the draft but you know what i gotta say i do like this a little bit more than adp wide receiver three and here's why you still have a 50 50 chance of getting wide receiver one production a slight chance of that top six production and you know i acknowledge that this is underwhelming and certainly not ideal <laughs> but it, but you know you're almost guaranteed a wide receiver two floor if you don't luck out on that elite upside there there's only one time over the last six years where you've gotten a wide receiver three not even a wide receiver four or worse just a wide receiver three so that means almost 85 percent of the time you're getting a wide receiver two or better however that's not at all what you're looking for when you're talking about the 110 spot. Right. The ADP wide receiver four. So, uh, you know, I, I think this is another point where you're probably better served to go running back here. Great point. Yeah, that, yeah definitely a great point, Ben. And, and that's, you know, one of those things where what kind of made putting this whole study together like a challenge initially was some of this can be so subjective. And, and you're absolutely right. Like, I, I'd rather have a guy bust, you know, bust as a wide receiver 24 than I would wide receiver 77 because the yeah. wide receiver 24, he's still a useful piece of your roster. So Every week, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Yep. So it's, one of those, it's one of those things where if you're going to miss, you, you want to miss right. <laughs> you know <laughs> exactly the, like the, there's there's different 50 50s yes these studies yes 50 50 for adp wide receiver three is a lot more volatile a lot more risky the 50 50 for adp wide receiver four may not have as much upside but you're not going to get burnt as bad either so it depends on what you need at what points in your draft yep. do you need a steady eddie right now or do you need somebody with a lot of upside based on how your league mates have been drafting around you so yep all, all things like steve said subjective and you, you got to uh, give it case by case consideration uh, moving on next up we have got adp wide receiver five steve i needed to get a little more exciting than the last two <laughs> well you're in luck not not because of uh this guy from 2019 and i know Oof. this this one definitely hits close to your heart but uh the adp wide Couldn't receiver five. the value <laughs> <laughs> uh juju smith schuster going at the 201 last season finishes as wide receiver 62 after his Oof. 500 yard season only 900 yards shy of the year prior uh and there were several reasons for that you know he you know had some... in 2020 yeah okay you know got bit by the injury bug obviously he played with some horrific quarterbacks throughout last season you know it was just it, everything went wrong for juju last year and he busted you know we were just talking about you want to miss small you missed big with juju yeah wr62 uh working our way from 2018 down to 2014 we've seen a wide receiver three wide receiver 10 wide receiver 33 wide receiver five and a wide receiver six so four times you have gotten a fantastic return on your investment and um you know not bad considering you know this on average over six years this is a player you're taking with the last pick of the first round and has had a six-year average of a wide receiver 20 overall finish and that's with juju's wide receiver 62 kind of dragging that number down quite a bit all right so here's what i'm seeing with the numbers i'm seeing 50 percent of the time you're getting a top six return with the fifth selected receiver in drafts and even better, 67% of the time, you're getting a top 12 receiver with a fifth selection in drafts. 
which leaves about a third of the time as a bust, which isn't terrible, but what I'm seeing in the trend in the numbers is you're getting two solid performances followed by kind of an outlier performance. Well, we had our outlier performance last year in Juju Smith-Schuster, so you would think this year would be a bounce back for that guy going with the fifth spot in drafts, and currently this season, going in the fifth spot, in drafts at the 109 mark is DeAndre Hopkins. Nook, is he going to be a bounce back? We just talked about a guy who had some questionable quarterback play. Nook going to a new team, new quarterback, new situation on that offense. Is he going to be the guy who can bounce back and give you a positive ROI with that fifth spot if he stays in this spot in drafts? That's a good point, number one. Number two, with how much it's coming out that he was unhappy in Houston now, I don't know. I think wide receiver five might be a very nice value for Mr. Hopkins going into the season. But like you said, we'll have to see where he finishes as we get closer. And I'll give him credit. We've always said that guy is quarterback proof. If you can catch balls from Tom Savage, you can catch balls from anybody. And like you said, if he's motivated, look out. Absolutely. You know, I find the ADP wide receiver five extremely interesting, and here's why. On average, over the last six seasons, you're talking about the 112 spot, which means in most snake draft formats, you've got back-to-back picks there at the 112 and the 201. Yeah. So three out of the last six years, if you go wide receiver, you're getting elite top six production, and two-thirds of the time, you're landing a surefire top 12 wide receiver one. Yeah, It is certainly solid. I will grant you that. But if I can somehow come away with two solid RB1 types here at the turn with back-to-back picks, I think that'd be my preference anyways. And I think you saw in our RB study, you can do that. There are guys out there who can finish top 12 that will be available at that spot as long as you pick the right guys. That's it right there. It's all relative to price tag. It's all relative to the right decisions. And that's why you want to read up on Steve's blog studies. You want to listen to this podcast and most definitely check out Total Foresight at FantasyForesight.com. Yep. So we have started to improve a little bit, I think, from the ADP wide receiver three and four. So are we going to continue that trend for ADP wide receiver six, Steve? Uh, so when, we, when we've gone through this each week, you know, we, no yeah. we, you know we, we have some spots that you know we find our sweet spots. You know, the, like Jay, I notice you have this warm and fuzzy theme going on tonight. So those spots that make you feel a little warm and fuzzy, and then there's those spots that we're like, oh, you just you want to avoid it. And wide receiver six is one of those. Um, you know, w- one of the reasons, right? First and foremost is over six years, you're, you're paying the 201 to acquire this particular wide receiver. And we'll just start with Tyree Kill in 2019, finished as wide receiver 31, so a considerable bust. You know, he finishes as a wide receiver three on the season. And um, I'll just work back from 2018 to 2014. Uh, wide receiver 11, wide receiver 43. Wide receiver 28, wide receiver 14, and wide receiver 25. So there was only one time that you walked away happy with your return on investment. And otherwise, you have four times where, you know, considerable busts. Yeah, this one is just straight ugly. I mean, 34% of the time, are you even getting a WR2 or better? Only one out of six years, the last six years, are you getting a top 12 quarterback? And 0% of the time are you getting a top six, and you're drafting a top six wide receiver. You know, that's just, that's ugly. In fact, 67% of the time you're getting a WR3 or worse. I mean, this is a dreadful spot in drafts. And right now... The sixth receiver is being drafted with the second pick in the second round. And, I mean, the bust rate is incredible. You cannot afford to have that significant of a bust at this spot in drafts with your second pick and a high-end second pick. And that player right now is Chris Godwin. That player is not going to <laughs> by the time hey. we start this season. I can't guarantee that with all these guys. I guarantee you by the time we get through training camp and all the Tom Brady, Tampa Bay hype, this man is not going to be drafted at ADP wide receiver six, or I'm doing backflips. All right. Hey, mark that down. We, we need to remember that. 
Oh yeah, we will. Oh dude, he's got he, <laughs> he, hey, he's got to jump over Nook, Julio, Tyreek, Devonte Adams, or Michael Thomas. I mean, that is that that those are studs. So he's got to leapfrog somebody. Every one of those guys has a little bit of iffiness to their yeah. game. Um, yeah, and you know, Chris Godwin broke out last season. And he had Jameis Winston thrown. Him. <laughs> what? What's wrong with that? Brady is What's a wrong with that? Accurate. Tom Brady is a little bit more accurate. You think so? Let's leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> so real quick, let's get back on track. Sorry. Here. Take a look at where the actual wide receiver sixes have been drafted over the last six years. Their average price tag is actually ADP wide receiver 18. Now, I should have clarified this column a little bit better previously, but this is the first time in this episode it's really jumped out to me. The six-year ADP price tag for actual performers isn't me saying like, okay, you need to act absolutely target this type of production at that specific point in your draft. No, what I'm saying is the bigger disparity between the actual finish and the price tag is a solid indicator that you ought to wait on that type of production in lieu of paying that type of price tag, that 201. So, so let me simplify it with this. Two-thirds of the time, you are using the 13th overall pick for wide receiver three production or worse. It's as simple as that. No thank you. Next. ADP wide receiver seven, please, Steve. Thanks. This, uh, <laughs> so this one kind of jumped out at me when I was doing the study just because um, it, it, it's interesting. Uh, and I'll, I'll just talk through it and you'll see why. So last season, uh, Odell Beckham Jr. was going here. Uh, at the 203, finishes wide receiver 29, obviously a bust. Very interesting, in fact, that if you if you told me ahead of time you were guaranteed a full season out of Beckham Jr., probably goes a lot higher than WR7. Um, and it's it's ironic because he wasn't healthy, needed sports hernia surgery, but yet he was healthy enough that he played 16 games. It was, just, it was right. wild because he's only done that Which one other I think time people in his are, I think people are grossly undervaluing the fact that he mustered 16 games in that situation last season with that injury. But, you know, keep sleeping on him. I appreciate that. Yep. And so <laughs> and so we'll work from 2018 down to 2014. And uh, 2018, Devontae Adams was the wide receiver one coming out of this spot. The year prior, we had a wide receiver five finish, wide receiver 44, wide receiver 24, and then wide receiver three. So this wide receiver seven spot, it's been a 50-50 on getting – like elite production, a fantastic return on your investment when you look at the, the positive finishes there. Um, like I said, it's just interesting because it's like a, literally a 50-50 coin flip when you look at it. And and I also want to point out that the wide receiver seven, that's usually a little bit of like a tear break um, between yeah. the first six guys. There's usually you know one, two guys clustered, three to four guys, and then you hit this wide receiver seven spot. So I'm going to be really interested, Jay, for you to tell us who's going there this year because, you know, that signifies to me a tear break. And also this is usually the, the cost of this position is usually the 204 in drafts. So you're starting to get a little cheaper in. Well, Steve, you nailed it, and I think when I say this name, you're going to see that there is a little bit of a tear break. Right now, going with the seventh pick – and going later than what you would expect, going later in the second round with the 10th pick in the second round is Amari Cooper right now. So, again, another interesting wide receiver. He is going early. There's a lot of expectation there. But I think I, I, I would be hard-pressed to see anybody argue that there's a clear delineation between the top six and then Amari Cooper. It's amazing to me how these names, uh, these different names, can be so similar in some of their fantasy outlooks uh, at the very same ADP wide receiver position. My point being is Steve talked about if you could guarantee me 16 healthy weeks of Odell Beckham, that changes my perception of him. Sure. Same goes for Amari Cooper. If you can guarantee me 16 healthy weeks of Amari Cooper in that offense after what we saw last season, he's not going as ADP wide receiver seven. He's not lasting until the 210 spot. He's going to go a little bit higher than that. But relatively as a part of this study, when you look at the um, when you look at where the ADP wide receiver seven is drafted at the 204, 
you're talking back to a coin flip here. But I will say not all 50-50 coin flips are created equal and at least one side of that coin is top six production. So if you're gonna take a gamble, you could take a gamble in worse spots. But again, if you've got a more solid running back type here that you can go with, it seems like that's the direction you wanna go, especially when you look at the big discrepancy between actual wide receiver seven production over the last six years and their price tag because on average you're only having to pay adp wide receiver 16 price for that wide receiver seven production so another indication to me that this isn't necessarily a point that you want to target but if the right guy falls obviously you can make an exception there so uh you know a little, little bit of a little bit of a bounce back from the adp wide receiver six so steve how's it looking with the adp wide receiver eight a wide receiver eight uh, historically over the last six years certainly been solid um last year that was mike evans going at the 208 on average finished as wide receiver 11. And that was despite missing uh you know a couple of games uh towards the tail end of last season now he he was certainly somebody that was frustrating to own at times because he could he could absolutely kill your team but he also had weeks where you were pretty much unbeatable because mike evans was on your squad so um, dude has never not had a thousand yard season in his career. So what can you say about that? Uh, now, 2018 to 2014, we've seen WR 38, WR 13, WR 152. Disclaimer, Keenan Allen, ACL first week, you know, terrible finish because of that. Yeah. WR eight and WR one. Hmm. So, you know, a six-year average going at the 206, so the middle of the second round, and we've seen two-thirds of the time, you know, 66% where this person has given you a fantastic return on your investment. Okay, so 17% of the time, I'm seeing that WA finish in the top six at the position. Half the time, that player's finishing in the top 12 at the position, and... 67% of the time, I'm at least getting a top 24 finish out of the WR8. Okay, I can live with that. Now, the trend the last few years is very interesting. We've seen a poor finish, a bust, and a great return. A poor finish, a great return. So, with that trend, this year would be a bust year. If we look at the last five seasons and the trend that we've seen develop in this spot, and going in this spot currently in drafts, with the 11th pick in the second round, almost the back end, the very end of the second round, is a teammate. That is Mike Evans, Chris Godwin's teammate. You know, you have two guys going in the top eight in drafts. There's a lot of expectations on that offense. Uh, you know, is there a bus candidate? Can they both live up to the hype going this high in drafts? Well, just like, uh, you know, w the only guarantee I can make with the ADPs right now is that Chris Godwin will not be taken as low as we were <laughs> currently seeing him go at Fantasy Football Calculator. So I think that correlates to Mike Evans becoming cheaper as well as we get closer to the draft. You know, they're, they're, right now, there's only so much passing production that can go around. If you start to tilt a little bit more to Godwin, you take away a little bit from Mike Evans. So I expect Mike Evans to fall a little bit, be a little bit more of a nice value play with Tom Brady throwing him the football this year. And, uh, you know, you have another situation. This is one of the times where there is a discrepancy, but I don't pay too much of attention to it because it's relatively close. Wide receiver eights, the actual wide receiver eights over the last six seasons, their price tag on average is the 312 and the ADP wide receiver 16. So this isn't huh. a locked and loaded, you have to go and take them, but it's also not some insane discrepancy discrepancy where you're talking about more than you know 12 or 15 wide receiver difference or something like that and like you talked about with the usability jay two-thirds of the time you're getting wide receiver two production or better half the time you're getting the top 12 production or better so it's a solid roi with a relatively low risk it's just not a huge chance of elite production either. right so right. it's all about what have you done with your prior pick what have your league mates done? You know, who's still available? All that stuff you need to take into consideration. But, you know, again, not a, not a bad spot to no. be wide receiver. Ben, you, have, you absolutely nailed it. What I'm seeing right now is I, I should expect kind of a back-end WR1, a high-end WR2. And is that what you need when you're picking right in this spot? That's it. For sure. Absolutely. All right. We're on a pretty nice trend here, Steve. What's it look like for ADP wide receiver 9? 
Well, if you threw 2019 out the window, it's actually pretty phenomenal. But we do have to talk about every year that's included in this study. <laughs> oh, okay. no. Um, yeah, I know, right? So earlier at the ADP 1, WR1 spot, Antonio Brown had quite a phenomenal run. Unfortunately, his first year for the uh, Oakland, now Las Vegas Raiders, that he never played for which led to his terrible WR-148 finish with his one game played with the Patriots. Uh, he was going on average at the 209 last season, and obviously as big of a bust as you can possibly have pretty much. Um, now, if you throw that out the window, in 2018 uh, through 2014, WR-6, WR-22, WR-4, WR-11, WR-10. So, you know... You shouldn't count on things like Andy yeah, Brown, right. Brown did happening, but if you yeah. throw that out, four out of five years, you had you know an elite return on your investment. So, uh, I, I, an interesting spot. I almost want to that discount Des Bryant. Uh, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I was gonna say that Des Bryant wide, wide receiver twenty two finish as a bust. Like that's not even that. Terrible. Yeah, Sorry, it, 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 you're you're right. It's it's not that far outside of. Um, you know the parameters of at least being like an in between. So no, it, it, and that's it. Like if we throw out the Antonio Brown because that was such an anomaly of a situation. That's that's not an injury. That's not a t. You know, it just it was such a different situation that it's something that you're not going to see normally. If you look at the rest of the historical data for the WR nines, I mean, eighty percent of the time you're getting a WR one value. And really, 100% of the time, you're getting a WR2, a top 24 receiver or better, out of that WR9 spot. So I love the return out of the spot. It seems like it's kind of a sweet spot. And it's go right now that player is going with the 11th selection in the second round, back end of the second round in drafts. And that player right now is Kenny Galladay. Kind of a, kind of a quiet, sneaky play there. Absolutely not a sexy pick, but somebody that is going to be rock solid performer on your roster week in and week out this season. This is a spot, ADP wide receiver nine, that you want to target the wide receiver position. Huh. This is the same ROI as the previous spot, but totally different usability. This is a sweet spot because this is where you get a solid shot at elite production a third of the time, solid assurance that you'll get at least wide receiver one production another third of the time, along with a slight chance that you get wide, wide receiver two production or a bust. High ceiling, high floor, very relatively low, low risk, and I love this spot for the wide receiver position. Very interesting. All right, we've got a really nice trend going. Steve, does it keep it up for ADP wide receiver 10? Well, if we were on a roller coaster, you know, this is where we're, we're heading down. <laughs> so, uh, the WR10, um, as far as ADP was concerned last year, was Adam Thielen. Uh, man, for people that paid uh, the, at the 211, people that paid that price, got they got destroyed last year. He finished... Sorry, Jay. <laughs> he finished WR59, uh, and, I mean, Jay, you know this as well as anybody. You know, he had the back issues. Uh, pretty much from week seven on, he was out of the lineup. If he was in the lineup, he wasn't fantasy relevant, or, you know, he maybe came in and, like, played a series and left the game. So, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, he, he was useless beyond week seven last year. Uh, so definitely that, you know, like we said earlier, not all busts are created equal, and this one's a big-time bust. Uh, so 2018 to 2014, we've seen a WR10 return, WR42, WR32, WR21, and WR7. So, you know, looking at it from a – Take me per- back to the day, Randall – Kyle oh, in 2014 oh. as a wide receiver seven. That hey, is, Raj, that missing is. him some wide receivers. <laughs> that's for sure. Man, uh, anyways, I'm not going to get overexcited on a name I'm going to mention later. But um, <laughs> yeah, two two out of six years, only, only a third of the time have you gotten uh, a proper return on your investment. And man. The three times that it's been a bust, they, they've been pretty big busts. So, you know, I'm yeah. just going to say that. Yeah, you, you nailed it, Steve. You know, you look at the WR10s, and you'd like to find some nice value there. But really, historically, those picks, those players 
have given you zero elite upside, zero finishes in the top six at the position. Only a third of the time are you getting a top 12 receiver in that spot. So you're really very little upside. And 17, so if you look at it, 50, only half the time are you getting a top 24 receiver or better. Only half the time. That means the other half, you're getting a wide receiver 36 or worse. I mean, that's... That is that is not good, not good, my friends. Especially when you're drafting, when you're drafting a, a receiver early in the second round, or I'm sorry, late in the second round. Fortunately, that pick has dropped a couple spots, but right now the WR10 is going with the second pick on average in the third round. So still an important early draft pick that you want to nail and help build your starting roster. So right now. This name is going, I think, is going to be a surprise. Right now, the WR10, the 10th receiver drafted overall in drafts, is Cooper Cup. I'm not even sure he's the first receiver on that team I would take, to be honest, guys. Yeah. No love for Robert Woods, apparently, out there. Hey, I, you know, I love Robert, Robert Woods, but if, if Jared Goff is all of a sudden going to be tentative and checking down all the time, then Cooper Cup could be the guy. It'll be a very interesting offense to watch unfold this season. This is a really interesting spot, the, the ADP wide receiver 10, because if you just looked at in isolation where the actual wide receiver 10s were drafted over the last six years, you would think this is a spot that you want to target for wide receivers because the, the price on average is really close, ADP wide receiver 14 versus the actual wide receiver 10 production. So on average, over the last six years, that price tag is the 210, okay? So like I've been saying this whole episode, not every 50-50 scenario is created equal. And I do not like this one. This is the 210, 22 overall, and I'm not getting any top six upside, and I have a 50% chance of spending that precious draft capital on wide receiver three production or worse. That's a significant no. bust. That's a big no. That's yeah. not happening. So, you know, you, you got to read your keys and make the right call at every point in your draft, but this is not a sweet spot for wide receivers. So I am really, really hoping for a nice turnaround as we round out this episode with ADP wide receiver 11 and 12. So, Steve, how's it looking as we look at the ADP wide receiver 12? I'm sorry, 11. Uh, certainly a bounce back. So the ADP wide receiver 11 last season was Keenan Allen. Uh, he went on average at the 301, so, you know, that early third-round pick. And, you know, if you're picking – if you're in a traditional snake draft, if you're picking in the – you know, at the 301, it's because you probably had the top pick overall in your draft. And, you know, so you're going to have that last pick of the second, first pick of the third. So pairing Keenan Allen with, you know – uh, that top overall running back, I'm sure, it was probably pretty nice for a lot of fantasy owners. And Keenan did what Keenan Allen normally does. He had a Keenan Allen type season, <laughs> finished WR8. Uh, 2018, down on the 2014, we have gotten uh, WR12, WR14, WR2, WR20, and coincidentally, Keenan Allen in 2014, WR29, the singular bust coming out of the ADP huh. wide receiver 11 position. So, you know, obviously when there's only one bust in six years coming out of a spot, you know, that that's certainly going to be favorable. And, you know, and it wasn't a horrific bust, you know, at that, given, given you know, that it's ADP wide receiver 11. You know what, Steve? I love the numbers that I'm seeing out of this, out of this WR11 spot. A complete reversal from what we saw out of the WR10 spot. 17% of the time, I'm getting elite finishes, a top six finish at the position. So that's, I, I, I'm happy that there's a chance of an elite finish. 50% of the time, I'm getting a top 12 receiver with the 11th pick with the 11th receiver going in drafts. Okay, great. I know I've got a 50-50 shot of at least getting a solid return on my investment. Now, is there safety on the back end? A whopping 83% of the time, I'm getting a WR2 or better. Okay, now I'm feeling pretty good about myself. I'm feeling warm and fuzzy, Steve. Even better, only once 
am I getting really a bust? And at that, the worst finish in the last six years is WR29. So just a little bit outside that top 24 position. And even better, the WR11 is the only drafted position for wide receivers who does not have a significant bust rate outside the top four players. No instances of a wide receiver four or worse finish in the last six years. So it may be bad, but it's not going to be like, oh my God, the sky is falling bad. I've got elite upside, I've got a solid return on investment, and I've got a nice safety blanket, a nice high floor, a decent floor, and no chance of a terrible finish. So who is this player this season? Well, we've said his name a couple of times just covering this spot, going with the 11th pick at the wide receiver position with the fifth selection in the third round is none other than Keenan Allen, a guy who went in this spot and finished WR8 last season. I love it. Keep sleeping on him. I don't care who his quarterback is. I will take Keenan Allen in the middle of the third round all day and be happy about it. I mean, to get that ROI, you know, two-thirds of the time it's great. You know, almost 85% of the time you're getting some form of good ROI. Yeah. One piece of information I think is critical to remember right here. We say that when you are talking about, on average, a 212 price tag and the ADP wide receiver 11, Almost 85% of the time you're getting wide receiver two production or better. You need to understand that wide receiver two can be high as, as wide receiver 13. Right. So 11 right. to 13, it, 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 almost no difference. Right. So, uh, Absolutely. You're, you're almost, you're almost getting a wide receiver one guarantee 85% of the time. You know, it's not that much of a lock, but. Man, you look at those percentages, you know, it's it's another one of those sweet spots where, like I said, if you got CMC at the 101, who knows who's available for you at the, the 212 and the 301, but it's going to be a couple of really nice players. Uh, now, yep. real quick, I do want to say that uh, in this instance, uh, where the actual wide receivers 11, wide receiver 11s were drafted, uh, supports this narrative as being a good spot to target wide receivers because the ADP price tag over the last six years is pretty close. Wide receiver 17 versus the wide receiver 11 production that you're getting out of that. So um, a nice spot, nice way to uh, the nice penultimate spot of this episode. So Steve, how are we rounding it out for ADP wide receiver 12? Uh, you know, it's solid, and, you know, it's funny. I think uh, reflecting on quarterbacks and running backs, they both kind of had sweet spots uh, at the 12, you know, the ADP 12 spot for those positions. But uh, with wide receivers, it, it's definitely been solid, and we'll go through that here real quick. So last season it was Stefan Diggs. Uh, he finished as WR20, so, you know, you know, a solid finish. Not great, but certainly not a bust. Um, which is surprising with Thielen missing as much time as he did that Diggs did not even get 100 targets and didn't finish higher. It, it's shocking. I think greener Slow pastures Diggs away. Slow that hype down this season. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so 2018 to 2014, we've had uh, WR13, WR3, WR14, and then a WR41 and a WR21. You know, on a, on a six-year average, it's actually a WR19 overall finish uh, coming out of us again, six-year average, the 302, so early third-round pick. And you do have a, you know, a 50-50 uh, proposition when it comes to getting that elite return on your investment out of the ADP WR12 spot. Yeah, you know, this one, the WR12, I was really hoping for a lot more value, I guess, or at least some kind of high floor. But when you look at the historical data, you are getting a very minimal amount of elite upside once in the last six years, so 17%. But other than that, there isn't a single instance of a top 12 finishing wide receiver. So, you know, you're then now you're looking at, okay, I'm drafting at the back end. So am I really expecting a top 12 finish? All right. 84% of the time, I'm at least getting a top 24 receiver. Okay, fair enough. And only once, I'm getting a significant bust. But just lacking that upside, you know, I know there's a minimal bust rate, guys. But just, it's almost like you're guaranteeing kind of somewhere in that WR2 spot. And is that really what you want to draft? when you're drafting in the third round with the fifth selection and right now the wr12 is adam thielen 
Well, I'll play a little devil's advocate there. Go for it, yeah. Let's say, let, let's say that you drafted early on at, say, the 102, and you got one of the top two running backs, and now you're coming back at the 211 and the 302. If you went really risky upside wide receiver guy at the 211, and there's no running backs that you like at the 302, Adam Thielen and that limited upside, but like that steady Eddie floor, based on who's available, may be what you're targeting at that point. Yeah. And when I look at Adam Thielen's outlook this season, that's kind of how I feel about him. Like there's a very slight chance that he could be that, you know, elite level type of wide receiver one at being the guy on that offense. But I feel a lot more comfortable slating him from 13 to 24. Uh, and, you know, so like I said, this isn't much of a sweet spot as our last one, uh, because it's interesting because both of these, the 12, the 11 and 12 offer you that 84, 85 percent chance of getting wide receiver two or better. But in the ADP wide receiver 11, the upside. Yeah, is so much right, stronger. right, right. You know, yeah, you, it, it, the upside is nowhere near as strong for this position. Uh, and, and, you know, you're. You're at the 302. You're pretty much at the wide receiver two point. You're getting what you're, you pay for more often than not. Um, and, and like I said, not exciting, but it sounds like a feeling type. Uh, it's not a bad way to round out this episode. And speaking of rounds, Steve took a look at this from yet another perspective and broke the bust in ROI rates out. Uh, in the buy round format. So he's going to look at each of the top five rounds over the last six seasons of wide receivers drafted in each one of those rounds and just give you that data perspective just to see uh, an overall macro view of, you know, which rounds it might be better to target wide receivers and than others. And Yeah, and I, and I do want to throw out there, if you do go to fancyforesight.com and go to the Foresight Encyclopedia tab, and you do read the uh, blog post that I put out there, I did cover the ADP wide receiver ones and the twos. So so for you listening at home, if you're wondering why there's you know five rounds I'm going to cover, it's, I am including all that data for all those wide receivers. Um, if we went over the top 24, we'd be on this episode for like two hours. So yeah. we're, we're just sticking to like, you know, the, the, the ones, so to speak, the top 12, the, the more elite wide receivers. So I'll just go through rounds one through five in that order. And I'm just going to give you all the bust rates. So first rounders, 39% bust rate, second round, 38% bust rate, third round, 34% bust rate. Now in the fourth round, we have a 42% bust rate. So there's an uptick of 8%. And then heading into the fifth round, 50% bust rate, another uptick of 8%. Now looking at it from the perspective of getting that elite return on investment. So finishing within five spots or better of where you were drafted in the first round, 54% of the time, second round, 53% of the time, third round, 56% of the time, fourth round, 53% of the time in the fifth round, 50% of the time. So when you think about it overall, I mean, wide receiver rounds one through five, certainly, I mean, it's pretty safe. I, I mean, the, the worst you're looking at is in the fifth round and it's still just a coin flip. And the reason I wanted to emphasize that as well as looking at the bust rate in the fifth round as also being a coin flip, a 50-50 proposition, is if you recall from last week, guys, when we talked about the running backs, once you started hitting the fourth and fifth rounds, you really fell off a cliff as far as starting to see the bust rates for running backs get a lot higher and the return on investments start to lower, and especially in the fifth round. So here's where like some of your draft strategy can come into play. Um, you know, I, for me personally, and I'll get your guys' thoughts here in a second, you know, I, I'm looking for as many touches out of running backs, like collectively sure. in those first couple of rounds, because that just seems like a smart thing to do. But then it's like, well, I'm not going to probably get any elite receivers, but that's okay because you're looking at third, fourth, and fifth rounds, and you have a lot less chance of busting. You're getting higher returns on investments on average out of your wide receivers than you are running backs in those rounds, especially – in the fifth round, the running back bust rate was nearly 75% of the time. So, right. I mean, I like a 50-50 proposition when it comes to wide receivers in that round versus a 75% chance with running back. So uh, I just I thought that was very interesting, and it kind of supports going running back, you know, early. 
Absolutely, Steve. When you compare the by round uh, analysis between running backs and wide receivers, it certainly pops out to you that uh, you're, you're going to be better served much more often than not to go running backs very early and then in rounds three through five look to fill out your wide receivers. It's all case by case. Every draft is different. Every league is different. But for the most part, on average, you, you know, you're going to be better served to prioritize running backs over wide receivers at the very top of your draft. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, I'm going to play a little bit devil's advocate because I'm seeing a better chance of a better return out of wide receivers in the first and second round than running backs. But then running, I'm sorry, running backs have a sweet spot in the second round. And then receivers have a really sweet spot in the third round, and we talked about kind of how they vary from there. So it's almost like it dials it up That's for not you. Devil's advocate at all. That completely supports exactly what me and Steve are saying because you're telling me that the sweet spot for running backs is in the second, and yeah. The sweet spot for wide receivers is in the third. Is it? It, it goes it, right along. No, with you're right. But why? But wide receivers have a lower bust rate and a better return of investment in the first round than running backs do. Running backs have a much have much better numbers in the second round, and then receivers come back and have much better numbers in the third round well yeah i mean like we said it's all aggregated it is know, it is every every single league and, 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 it, player hey. and team is very different but you know I, i'm telling you what the the well for top end running backs dries up extremely quickly every single season but i'll tell you what we talked about the last two guys on this episode keenan allen adam Thielen, going in the wr11 and wr12 spot the third round for wide receivers has a has almost the highest return on investment of any positional player round we've seen so far and the lowest bust rate so we talked about that safe floor that's evidence of it right there yeah no you're absolutely right you're just it's not playing devil's advocate you're making our points that's all <laughs> uh, I, I, I have hold on a second today. hold on hold <laughs> Hold on, I can stop your video right now. <laughs> I thought we were going to have our first technical difficulty of the day. But I just oh, Ben's screen's not working. Oh, what oh, happened? Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, man. So anybody wrap it anything up. else before we wrap it up? All right. Guess what, guys? Last season when we did this podcast series, we did not do one of these episodes on the tight end position. I don't know how fun it's going to be. I don't know how dirty it's going to be, but we have got, <laughs> we've got a piece study on the tight end position coming for you next week. And you know what? Whether it's good or terrible, either way, can't wait. And that wraps up this episode of Fantasy Foresight, the podcast. We thank you for joining us. Be sure to visit us, as always, at fantasyforesight.com. Use the links at the bottom of the page to find us across social media, including Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and wherever you pod. We hope you enjoyed the episode, and we'll see you next time.